Thank you. Well, I'm a cyborg. I identify myself as a cyborg because I'm psychologically and biologically connected to cybernetics. I have a couple of implants in my arms that allow me to extend my senses beyond my traditional senses. Since 2013, I feel the seismic activity of the world. And I'm connected to online seismographs that allow me to perceive the seismic activity of the world. So I can perceive all the earthquakes from run one in Richter scale through vibration in my left arm. So now I'm here, but if there's an earthquake in Japan or in Greece, I will feel a vibration. Depending on the intensity of the vibration, I would know if the magnitude of the earthquake will be stronger or weaker. At the beginning, I had to get used to all this new input, but after feeling all these vibrations, it became natural. So after all this movement, after all these vibrations, after feeling this universal motion, it became an emotion. And this is when I felt that I became a cyborg. It's when I felt that my organism and cybernetics had united and given me a new sense, the seismic sense. We are used to see the map of the world in this way. But underneath of the lines of the, of the continents, there are the tectonic plates. There are eight major tectonic plates, ten minor plates, and many microplates. The tectonic plates are alive, they evolve, they constantly move, they release and create tension, they create earthquakes. Earthquakes are part of our nature. They always existed and they're still a very mysterious phenomenon. In 2010, my childhood friend and fellow cyborg Neil Harvison and I created the Cyborg Foundation with three aims. One, to help humans to become cyborgs, Two, to defend the cyborg rights. And third, to pro promote cyborgism as an art and social movement. Cyborg comes from the, from the union of two words, cy cybernetics and organism. And it was created to define humans that modify themselves in order to survive in space. In the endless list of definition of the word cyborg, we try to nail it down with, with three different ways, or three different ways to define the union between cybernetics and organism. One could be a psychological cyborg. Most of you probably are psychological cyborgs, which is the feeling of being united to technology. For example, when our phones are running out of battery, you probably say, I'm running out of battery, instead of saying, my mobile phone is running out of battery. The other option could be a biological cyborg, which is the physical union between cybernetics and organism. And the other one would be a neurological cyborg, which is the modification of the mind through the union between, with cybernetics. So if we extend our senses with cybernetics, we'll, we'll change our perception, and this will change our brain in long term. I'm a dancer, I'm a movement researcher. So since I was studying dance in college, I've been looking for a way to perceive movement in a deeper way. I've done some experiments um, to perceive uh, and experiment movement with technology. But when you think about dance, you think about movement, and then you realize that not only humans move, there are many things that move and in many different ways. The earth keeps moving, not only it rotates, but it shakes every day through earthquakes. It's a massive movement that most of the time is imperceptible. So my aim was to transform this huge movement to my body. Earthquakes are a choreography we cannot predict. It's our planet's dance. The, pla the, the friction between the tectonic plates resembles the dance floor of a ballroom. Earth can be a lethal dance unless we can learn to dance with it. Earthquakes are the heartbeat of our planet. The earth beat. Now that, now that I feel the, the earthquakes in my body, I feel that I have two heartbeats, my own and the earth. This has changed my perception of the planet. Now I feel much more connected to it. Before I knew that the earth was a living organism, now I feel it. Also, if there's a big earthquake, earthquake in the middle of the night, it would wake up. So my daily life is interrupted by earth. Also, I think it's unfair that earthquakes are seen as a bad thing, when the bad thing is that humans haven't been able to adapt to this natural phenomenon. In art, 
the artists no longer need to use technology as a tool anymore. We can become technology and to create new senses and then express ourselves through these new senses. I see the extension of the senses through cybernetic as an art itself, a cyborg art. The artwork of a cyborg artist is the creation of a new sense. My seismic sense is my artwork, but I'm the only one in the audience. So in order to share my experience, I create external artwork. One of my pieces, it's called Waiting for Earthquakes. It's a, it's a dance piece where I stand still and I wait for an earthquake to take place, which is very often, and then I move, I move according to the intensity of the earthquake. So if there are no earthquakes during the performance, there's no dance. This is a real-time piece. So it's like a duet between the Earth and myself. Earth acts as if it's, uh, as it's the choreographer, and I'm just the interpreter. So Earth matches the rhythm of the piece. I also made a cyborg a sculpture. A, a sculpture that it's a 3D replica of my arm, and that vibrates every time there's an earthquake in real time. So visitors in the museum can touch the arm and feel earthquakes as anything is happening in that moment. It's a cyborg sculpture because it's a sculpture cybernetically connected to a living organism, in this case, the Earth. And I also transform my input into music. I do seismic percussion, where the score and the rhythm I play is dictated by the rhythm of the tectonic plates. So in this case, Earth is the composer of the piece. Now that I'm a cyborg, I don't feel closer to machines or to robots. I feel closer to nature because I can feel my planet. And I feel closer to other animals because I can feel earthquakes like other animals can. I really believe that we can learn much more from other animals. We can get inspired by them. If we take a look at nature, we'll see that what we think is very unnatural is actually very natural because some animals can fly, some animals can create light, so animals can perceive infrared and ultraviolet, and even immortality already exists in nature, as there's a jellyfish that never dies. I really believe that if we extend our senses in order to understand and perceive our planet in a deeper way, our behavior would also change. So, in this century, rather than giving new senses to our machines, we could give new senses to ourselves. For example, rather than giving the sense of, uh, of knowing presence behind our cars, we could have this sense to ourselves and have a deeper relation, a rep a deeper relation with our surroundings. So instead of using technology, we can become technology. Or let's take light, for instance. As humans, we haven't developed night vision like other animals. Wouldn't be more natural to change ourselves in order, in order to see at night than changing our environment? If Edison would have invented night vision instead of a light bulb, we would be able to see the stars at night. Uh, the energy waste and the pollution created by artificial light, it's damaging our planet. It's daylight outside, but we sit inside this room with artificial light because we are blind and unable to see each other without it. If Wright brothers would have invented wings instead of airplanes, would be the ones flying. When we say that we fly from Paris to New York, it's not entirely to, in true, as is the airplane who's, who's flying. The, the origin of the word cyborg uh, talked about the, um, enlarging the human experience and that cybernetics would free the man to explore. I think it's in the, natural, in the natural nature of humans to explore. We're natural explorers that evolve and wonder. So my, next, uh, my current project is space exploration. I want to be connected to the moonquakes, the seismic activity that is happening on the moon. So I have an implant on my right arm ready to connect to the seismograph on the moon. So now I'm feeling earthquakes in one arm and I'll be feeling moonquakes in the other arm. This will allow me to be here and in space at the same time. Our senses no longer be, need to be attached to our body. If we use internet as a sense, we can feel things that are happening very far from us. We can think, feel things that are happening in the other side of the planet or even in space. If we use new senses 
to travel to space and explore space, we can become sense turnouts. So I think we need to try to use the technology we have to open our eyes, to open our minds. Let's listen to our planet and leave Earth in peace. Let's try not to change our environment and be brave enough to change ourselves. I think we are, the, we, we are the ones who need to make sure that the union between technology and our species does not alienate us from nature, but bring us closer to it, to other animals, to, plant, to the planet, and to outer space. Thank you. <laughs>